हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेसन दैट इज अ नेशनल नॉलेज कमीशन 2006 टू 2009 बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आवर डिस्कशन लेट मी टू इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ आई डॉक्टर निराधार दे एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो लेसन फ्रेंड्स टुडे दिस लेसन इज इंक्लूडेड uh in the eighth unit the eighth week of your online course uh the title of this module is development of school education in 1986 and after in this module three important lessons are there first lesson is national policy on education npe 1986 and national education policy nep 2020 already you have gone through uh, this lesson and the second lesson that is national knowledge commission 2006 to 2009 that we are going to discuss today in this uh, session and the next uh, lesson from this unit from this module is national curriculum framework ncf 2005 that includes national curriculum framework Uh, mostly for teacher education that's called as ncfte national curriculum framework for teacher education 2009 so now let us focus upon the second lesson that is national knowledge commission nkc 2006 to 2009 uh, let me to focus upon some of the learning outcomes uh, from this lesson i am very much hopeful that uh, after watching this uh, video lesson and uh, going through the part e content which is given in your module you will be able to explain the concept of knowledge pentagon as per the nkc national knowledge commission so what is the concept of uh, knowledge pentagon then further discuss the important aspects of education as per national knowledge commission further you will be able to describe the key recommendations of national knowledge commission and uh, you will be equally critically analyze the recommendations of national knowledge commission i am very much hopeful that after going through this video as well as the part content which is given in your module definitely you will achieve these learning outcomes now let me to go forward to understand uh, the very concept of the national knowledge commission which is popularly known as uh, nkc 2006 to 2009 it was established in 2006 and nkc has given subsequently uh, few reports and uh, 2009 reports uh, are the final report of nkc the national knowledge commission is a high level advisory body to the prime minister of india uh, with the objective of transforming india into a knowledge society friends particularly starting from school education to higher education what transformation is required how uh, you can say new shape uh, can be given to higher education that was the major focus of nkc 2006 to 2009 and it has given many recommendations many suggestions to prepare Uh, a knowledge society who are well versed with the developing nature of science and technology developing nature of knowledge in different field you can say it may be in education it may be pedagogy it may be science and technology it may be agriculture it may be law it may be management in other sectors also then further it was an ngo for to transform the knowledge landscape of india so here you must have observed that uh, you know uh, so far as uh, uh, you know uh, the equality of knowledge is concerned uh, you can say that uh, now we have achieved uh, equity and equality so far as knowledge is concerned okay if you will go through uh, different parts of the country if you will go through the remote india the rural india and uh, if you will go through uh the school education even if the colleges uh, uh, that are established at the tahsil area at the panchayat level even at the block level you will find that uh, uh, 
uh, the parity of education and the standard of education uh, uh, there may be certain difference so that's why how to achieve equality so far as knowledge is concerned at a different level of education at different stages of education it was also uh, uh, one of the important concerns of national knowledge commission and further nkc focuses on areas of areas of five different areas that's called as the knowledge pentagon that is access to knowledge the knowledge concepts knowledge creation knowledge application as well as knowledge services further we will be explaining detail about what is the very concept of uh, access to knowledge then knowledge concept knowledge creation knowledge application and knowledge services which is called as a knowledge pentagon here you see on your screen uh, uh, now you see knowledge pentagon uh, it includes uh, five different uh, aspects of knowledge one is called as the access to knowledge to provide access of education to the learners to the students even if to the population to the uh, common people even then further what is the concept of knowledge to understand the very concept of certain aspect of knowledge okay and further how to create knowledge and after creating how to disseminate knowledge from one situation from one generation to other generation mostly for the development of the society then for the knowledge application so how to apply those knowledge for our own development for the development of the society it may be knowledge relating to agriculture it may be knowledge relating to teaching and learning process it may be knowledge relating to management and other disciplines also then knowledge services okay so friends these are the certain uh, five different aspects uh, and case says that this is the knowledge pentagon so how to achieve this this knowledge pentagon now let me to uh, you know uh, uh, focus upon uh, the particular aspects Uh, the important things that uh, that includes in each knowledge pentagon just like first is access to knowledge to provide uh, access to knowledge to each and every individual each and every learner each and every students uh, who are pursuing a certain academic program and at the same time beyond the periphery of the school beyond the surrounding of the school even if there is possibility of gaining enough knowledge in formal way in non formal way also so how to do this so here individual must possess the ability to receive and comprehend knowledge so all individual is having that ability that's called as every individual can construct uh, his or her own knowledge so that's why we have to provide certain support services to them we have to provide certain experiences and uh, uh, we have to facilitate to the learners to the students so that uh, they can comprehend the knowledge they can understand the very concept of knowledge and further after understanding it they can use it individuals who have the ability to receive and comprehend knowledge readily obtain it so friends who is having the ability to receive first of all to receive with a positive willingness with uh, a certain interest okay and further the individual can also com comprehend it develop a type of comprehension develop a type of understanding and and that willingness uh, if the individual is happily accepting to understand the knowledge then they can obtain it also they can understand it also further accurate knowledge of the state and its activities should be made available to the general public so try to understand first of all what is the right knowledge what is the accurate knowledge okay so uh, you can take the example of any concept you can take the example of any you can say theories so what is the very concept of that theory what the theory says okay so first of all so how to make that right knowledge to the general public that is also comes under the access to education access to knowledge and further access is about increasing the opportunities of individuals or groups excluded from mainstream knowledge system so it is also come under the access 
that the population, the groups, the learners who are not in the mainstream of the society, who are not, uh, uh, you can say, in the school surrounding, who has not received a proper formal education. So how to make education, how to make knowledge reach at them. So that is also uh, another important aspect come under access to knowledge. And uh, to understand about the very concept of knowledge, let me focus upon suitable education system relies largely on a complex interface of human resources, pedagogical methods, curricula, infrastructure and academic standards. So try to understand. Unless we understand a concept, we cannot use it. We cannot disseminate it. So that's why friends, here suitable education system relies largely on a complex interface of human resources. So how to use the human resources, how to develop the human resources and how to use proper pedagogical methods to disseminate and to teach or to transact the curriculum and further how to develop a suitable curriculum, a curricula for a particular stages of education. Then accordingly what type of infrastructure is required. So infrastructure is somehow related with the academic standard, related with to provide right education to the students, to the learners. So that's why it comes under the knowledge concept. Further, special initiatives required to bring 100 million of illiterate children into the mainstream. Okay, So to educate them, to provide them right knowledge. So who are not within uh, the boundary of formal education or to whom we call as the illiterate who has not received the formal education, so how to address them also. So what special initiatives should be taken at the, to bring them to the mainstream of the society. Okay, So that's also come under to provide them education and to involve them uh, in acquiring certain skills and uh, to earn or to achieve bread and butter aim. Then for the strengthening basic infrastructure in elementary schools, uh, boosting teaching quality and improving academic standards are also come under the knowledge concept. So, so friends at the elementary schools, strengthening the infrastructure, it's, it comes under the physical infrastructure as well as the human resources, appointment of the subject teachers, appointment of adequate teachers to teach the students. That will boost teaching quality and improving academic standards also. For the secondary education needs to be recognized as a crucial intermediary step between elementary and higher education. You see, the concept of knowledge or you can say the minimum level of knowledge or what is required, the very knowledge or the very concept, the skills and competencies that we call as the graduated skill, which is meant for a particular stage, a particular level of education. Unless we achieve, unless we receive the minimum level of learning at the elementary stage, we are not in a position to understand the concept of knowledge which is included at the secondary stage. And further, secondary stage knowledge will also help to understand the concept, understand the subject which is included at the senior secondary stage. Accordingly, a proper senior secondary stage subject treatment will also equally help you to understand the concept, to understand the things uh, which is included in the higher education. So, friends, then further I can say that the innovative strategies are required to make secondary education less strenuous and more appealing to the students. So how innovatively we can involve the population, we can involve the students for understanding the knowledge and accordingly to use, to apply those knowledge in day to day life situation. And it also includes requirements of proper funding regulatory frameworks and curricula, private sector participation, then academic standards and research in higher education. Uh, it also stress upon consoli consolidating and extending India's growing international presence in uh, information and technology sector, in medicine, in law, in engineering, etc. So knowledge is not limited in a single discipline, rather in every discipline how to understand the proper knowledge, how to understand the right knowledge. Then requirements of vocational education for quality skilled force is also another important aspect. Then formal education is for building human capital is also 
the code uh, as one of the uh, you know knowledge pentagon comes under the knowledge concept then develop distance education as a viable alternative to formal education only formal education cannot uh, possible or cannot satisfy the need of the population the need of the people we people we have a huge country nearly 140 crores of populations are there so that's why how to integrate vocational education in the formal education system in the school education system so that the students the learners when they will pursue a program pursue a course equally they will also earn they will also gain they will also acquainted with certain skills and competencies and further those skills and competencies will help the learner for uh, 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 to be self-sufficient and to fulfill the bread and butter aim of their life. Then lifelong learning needs to be encouraged for all types of jobs, especially in the public sector. Okay, so here we are not talking about only the formal education, rather it should provide us a sense of lifelong learning. Every stages of life we record to know certain things, to understand certain things, to develop our skills and to upgrade our skills also that is very much possible through the lifelong learning uh, 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 through lifelong learning then further transacting knowledge into local languages for ensuring knowledge is uniformly available in society and a local knowledge is made available for use and analysis so how to use the local knowledge so how to integrate how to include the local experiences as well as the local knowledge it may be related to uh, uh, art and culture may be related to languages may be related to craft how to integrate it with the curriculum okay so that also come under uh, under knowledge concept and the next let me to focus upon the knowledge creation okay so try to understand uh, what are the different things that's come under the knowledge creation so it includes for promoting research in an institution of higher education in order to bring them at par with the National Research Institute and the laboratories, link research in public institutions with industry requirements to foster a symbiotic relationship between them, diversify the funding sources of research in institutions and universities, allow, uh, allowing private investment or public-private partnership in research and development so friends here knowledge creation is given importance only understanding the knowledge concept is not enough rather uh, we have to or our education system should train uh, the population train the people that they will be able to create knowledge for the use of next generation that can be transmitted from situation to situation and generation to generation then further promoting innovative uh, innovation through the National Innovation Foundation, they encouraging entre entrepreneurship at the local and national level is also another important aspect. Then further knowledge application. So here, the knowledge that you have acquired, so how to apply it for satisfying the productive uh, purpose, just like knowledge can be productively applied to promote technological changes and facilitate the reliable and regular flow of information. So how to use the created knowledge for uh, promoting technology and for bringing uh, development and to fulfill the aim of certain uh, productive concept or productive aspect of the society. The knowledge can be very effectively applied for the betterment of the rural poor. So how to connect it and how to change the life the standard of life of the rural people so that is also come under uh, uh, when we will uh, apply the created knowledge that can also be possible the national knowledge commission has identified the areas such as education agriculture rural and traditional knowledge where knowledge application will produce significant benefits and finally the last knowledge pentagon that's called as the knowledge services what it says it says the use of knowledge services more popularly known as e-governance that has the potential to simplify citizens interact with the state. So how to 
disseminate knowledge to the rural India by the government by using uh, the knowledge services that's called as the e-governance so that so that the uh, people of the country they should understand the very concept of certain things and they can better after understanding they can better eat better use it in their own situation then ending the culture of fear in the people who often find themselves uh, you know completely at the mercy of frontline government officials uh, while trying to access public services try to understand so here uh, uh, you know a belief should be established among the common public that they should come forward and and they should get proper knowledge further that knowledge acquisition proper knowledge acquisition will help the person for bringing development in his or her uh, one life in their own life okay so that's why uh, the common public should come forward and they should understand the very concept of certain things it may be related to agriculture it may be related to science and technology it may be related to certain art and literature or craft and further how to engage them for doing their own work and for the technology provides us with an opportunity to ensure accountability transparency and efficiency in government services including education it is also another important aspects come under the knowledge services so friends these are the five important uh, knowledge pentagon and the entire report of national knowledge commission is based upon this knowledge pentagon and now let me to focus upon the important aspects of nkc recommendations national knowledge commission recommendations mostly you will find the recommendations are based upon three important aspects of education that is expansion excellence and inclusion okay so how to expand knowledge then how to include the varieties of practices as, as india is a diversified country we have many diversities but we consider all our diversities as our strength not as our weaknesses our diversities help us for our own growth for our own grooming and for our own development so that's why expansion of knowledge inclusion of diverse concept of knowledge and further to uh, uh, you can say achieve excellence by right practice of knowledge are the three important aspects uh, basing upon which uh, you know recommendations are given by the national knowledge commission now let me to focus upon the very concept that address uh, in different aspect just like expansion includes massive expansion of 1500 universities nationwide that would enable india to attain uh, a gross enrollment ratio of 15% by 2015 now in nep 2020 uh, it says that to reach to reach 50% gross enrollment ratio by 2030 but in nkc it was targeted that to reach at least at the 15% of gross enrollment ratio by 2015 and further establishment of an independent regulatory authority of higher education ira he so now this is also part of the new education policy to uh, develop a regulatory body and uh, the other regulatory body will come under the main come under the ira he then increase uh, public spending and diversify sources of financing so how to bring the financing and how to spend in diversify sources also and further the expansion of the system of higher education is not possible without enhanced level of financing both at the public and private sector so how to enhance the finance how to arrange the finance and use it in education and further establishment of 50 national universities that that can provide education of the highest standard okay national universities means the central universities so it's come under how we can expand the education system as per the need of the huge population of this country then further excellence so how to achieve the quality how to achieve the excellence the ndo for to transfer higher education must reform the existing institutions the existing higher education institutions so how to reform them how to bring them changes and how to come forward with a paradigm shift so far as 
the facilities that the institution uh, is providing so how to how the institute will provide better functionings so that excellence how to achieve then for the, the system of affiliating colleges for undergraduate education which may have been appropriate 50 years ago is no longer adequate or uh, or appropriate and needs to be reformed indeed there is a urgent need to restructure the system of undergraduate colleges affiliate to, affiliated to universities the old institutions the institutions uh, uh, you know uh, which completed 50 years now there is the time to go for a complete revamp of the institution it was come under the excellence that is to achieve the quality and to provide quality education to the students and further an expansion of higher education which provides students with choices and creates competitions between institutions is going to be vital in enhancing accountability. So how the institution will develop uh, at the parity, how universal or you can say similar types of development will occur institution to institution is also another important aspect and so far as inclusion is concerned let me focus upon education is the uh, fundamental mechanism of social inclusion so the social practices our culture our custom our tradition our belief and at the same time our craft and trade that we practice the traditional craft and trade that we practice in our society in our life so how to integrate it in the education system so that we can create a good generation who will well versed with the traditional knowledge as well as traditional practices and further it is essential to ensure that no student is denied the opportunity to practice in higher education due to financial constraint so how to provide them financial facilities so that they can get better education major aim of higher education system must be to ensure that access to education for economically and socially underprivileged students is enhanced in a, subst in a substantial more effective manner so how to address the downtrodden how to address the poor people uh, by providing quality and better education to them it was also focused point and that can be possible if our education system is very much integrated and inclusive in nature. And now let me to focus upon very briefly some of the recommendations of National Knowledge Commission 2006 to 2009. First of all, the commission uh, recommended to establish or for the establishment of 1500 universities to attend the gross enrollment ratio of 15% by 2015. So how to achieve it? So, more universities should be established and it was recommended to establish 1500 universities. The revision of curricula once in every three years. So, in every three years, the syllabi, the curriculum should be revised in different programs. Then, supplementing annual examination with internal assessment. For, uh, for, transfer, for transforming the examination system, the evaluation system, how to include more internal assessment so far as for certifying the uh, learner is concerned so far as evaluating their achievement is concerned was also another important recommendation then tradition to a course credit system so how to develop the curriculum develop the course as per different credit and how to define the credit also was also important uh, recommendation and further establishment of a central board of undergraduate education CBUE Central Board of Undergraduate Education then accordingly State Board of Undergraduate Education was also important recommendation and uh, in State Board of Undergraduate Education all the undergraduate colleges uh, will have one board that may be the State Board of Undergraduate Education and for the establishment of independent regulatory authority of higher education that called as IRAH by an act of parliament and other regulatory bodies just like the AICTE, All India Council for Technical Education, Medical Council of India, MCI, Bar Council of India, BCI, NCTE, National Council for Teacher Education and other regulatory bodies that will come under the uh, uh, you know, uh, independent regulatory authority for higher education. Then 
आईआरए एच ई सेल हैव द पावर टू सेट एंड मॉनिटर स्टैंडर्ड्स आवर डिग्री एंड लाइसेंसिंग द एक्रेडिटेशन प्रोसेस और एक्रेडिटेशन टू एक्रेडिटेशन फॉर डिफरेंट कोर्सेस एंड डिफरेंट प्रोग्राम्स एंड अदर रेकमेंडेशन ऑफ एन के सी आर जस्ट लाइक नॉलेज एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन डिसेमिनेशन इन हायर एजुकेशन सिस्टम सो हाउ टू रीच द राइट नॉलेज फ्रॉम वन ग्रुप टू एनादर ग्रुप फ्रॉम वन इंडिविजुअल टू एनादर इंडिविजुअल एंड हाउ टू मेक रीच द to the needy students to the right clientele how to disseminate it from one situation from one place from one institution to other institute from students to student then evaluation of courses by teachers and students so here how to involve students in peer assessment how to involve students in group assessment was also for bringing transformation uh, uh, in the or transparency in the system of evaluation so far as the courses that the learners are pursuing was also important recommendation then eliminating salary differentials within and between the universities if we we'll talk about the state university and central university even if within a university in different level of the faculties some are permanent some are ad hoc so how to uh, eliminate and how to minimize uh, the gap between uh, salaries institution to institute institution even if in one institute in different stages of education was also important recommendation and policies for entry of foreign institute in india and promotion of indian institutions abroad it was very important recommendation that how uh, how to promote foreign institution to open their campuses open their courses in india and how to Uh, promote our institutions, Indian universities and institutions, so that they can also run uh, 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 their campuses abroad. So that was also important recommendation. So friends, now let me to focus upon uh, uh, some of the important questions that may help you for your preparation of NTA exam. That is, explain the concept of knowledge pentagon as per NKC. We have already discussed that. five different aspects of knowledge pentagon then discuss important aspects of knowledge recommendations three important aspects were there excellence expansion uh, we have already discussed then critical examine the recommendations of nkc for development of education in india so friends just to recapitulate today we discuss uh, uh, the national knowledge commission and its recommendations uh 2006 to 2009 and uh, we also discussed about the very concept of a knowledge pentagon and different aspects of the recommendations of uh, national knowledge commission it may be expansion of knowledge is concerned it may be excellence in knowledge is concerned uh, i think uh, uh, this lesson will help you to understand the concept and further uh, to attend the nta Uh, examination so far as the module is concerned thank you